Now I know exactly why the hell WWE insisted on having this fast lane show Sunday night, and so do all of you. This is all about their first run on the Peacock TV shit. They had to test it out. Wanted to find out what gaps or issues existed. I totally get it. I totally understand. Because God knows they got some kinks to work out with that crap. Paid two fifty if you look at the four month deal they're running on the damn Peacock Network. I basically paid two fifty for this show, and I want my refund. I didn't get any sparklers. But who the hell heard of you can't pause the damn live stream? You can't rewind and fast forward. What the, who the hell did, decided that? And then, oh yeah, the 90 second to two minute lag from the WWE Network with the Peacock stream. Well, that worked out really well. <sighs> a wet fart. And this show was frankly a popcorn fart. This was bad. About as bad as you anticipated it being. Right from the Jump Street to the Women's Tag Team Championship. Like, why do you continue to trot out Bianca and Sasha into this goddamn tag match to have them lose? Stop doing that! Why, oh why, does WWE insist on screwing the pooch on everything involving this buildup between Sasha and Bianca on the road to WrestleMania? This match was nothing. You knew you were going to get to the point where there's going to be all types of fuckery because Reginald was out there. That's exactly what you got. And then after the match, where they inevitably lost, of course, Sasha smacks the taste out of Bianca's mouth and Bianca's just going to stand there and let her do that? I'm going to fucking break. These were the streets. Bianca would have yanked Sasha's hair out and beat the brakes off that scrawny bitch. And they did just have her smack the taste out of her mouth like Sasha's some big badass? That was stupid. Next, Intercontinental Championship. I would have much preferred if there was no match at all. Let's have these guys brawl for five or seven minutes. Big E in the build-up to this was so pissed and I'm going to come for you and I'm going to come for you. And you better watch out. Here's me showing real serious emotion. I can be a main event guy. And now we're going to do that with largely a standard wrestling match. That's how you're going to get your revenge. <laughs> it would have been so much better if you really built up the heat and the tension here and just had Big E go to town on him and then Apollo go to town on him, like battle all over the damn place, five, seven minutes, and kick the can down the road to WrestleMania because that's what the fuck you're doing anyways. But no, instead we just insisted on having the stupid-ass match and you got to that finish that was a total wet fart. Where Apollo big pins Piggy for two, and then they roll over, and then Biggie pins Apollo for three. Like that's not how you do any of this shit. How this was bad. They said, literally they were telling you like they didn't care. Nothing of substance was going to happen on this show. It's like the whole crap with Shane McMahon and what he was warming up earlier in the day. He hurt his knee, so he wasn't going to be able to wrestle. So he brought Elias out to the ring to just tell him, Hey, you're my replacement with the face brawn. Good luck with that, bitch. <laughs> what a fucking waste of time. And all the while, when you think about it, when you think about it, they're going above and beyond to have Shane be a total prickin' penis here and a pussy all at the same time. And he has infinitely more redeeming qualities than Braun Strowman. That lets you know, WWE, you have a Braun Strowman problem. There is just no appeal there right now whatsoever. I want Shane to go over at WrestleMania, and I'm not the only one. If anybody even gives a crap about this, which a massive majority of the hardcore fans certainly don't, because they look at this and say, well, this is a waste of time, because you know what? It is a goddamn waste of time. If you're going to insist on having Shane work at WrestleMania, then why can't it at least be Triple H? At least there's decades of story there. You could put some type of fictional, you know, running the company, future CEO shit on the line. Like, you can involve Stephanie, choose between her husband and her brother, and you can incorporate the dad. Like, all these things that would really work that could make some, for some potential dynamic storytelling. Instead, it's either, hey, my name is Shane. I'm talking about Braun Strowman. Fee-fi-fo-fum. 
Why does the big Care Bear look so dumb? <laughs> and we still want Shane to win! I know I certainly do. Oh, God, and don't even get me started on Seth Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura. Bad enough before this, they had to sit there and have Matt Bill show up at his scooter and talk about his story. You could tell a story and nobody knows what you're talking about. Who the hell at the USA Network sees any appeal in this asshole whatsoever is unbeknownst to me. Why? Why, 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 why? Why? And why subjects, subjects Shinsuke to this? It's bad enough he's got to go out there and wrestle against Seth Rollins' weight rating slayer. I got to sit there and subject him to this crap. How oh, can he concentrate? It's horrible. And somebody needs to let PETA know that Seth Rollins, rating slayer, was committing cruel and unusual punishments on a peacock tonight. Because this was bad. The only drip you should be talking about with Seth Rollins is every time he appears on your screen, television, laptop, mobile device, phone, tablet, doesn't fucking matter. Only thing that's dripping is the interest in anything he's involved with or anything on a show that involves him seeping away by the moment. And this match certainly brought the yawns for me. <sighs> and I know I'm not the only one. And maybe it's fitting that Shinsuke kind of fucked up his spot and his timing for the finish because it was perfect for this show. It was yet another <laughs> of a finish. <laughs> on a night full of them. And unfortunately, it wasn't an AEW Revolution type of <laughs> finish. Those are the types of finishes that are worth paying 50 bucks for. Because by God, <laughs> that just means everything. Like that's history. That's all time legendary stuff. Here, you got nothing that you're really going to remember. Well, maybe the next match, Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. Which, to be clear, everybody knew was going to mean that The Fiend was coming back. And that's all you were waiting for. And boy, did you get him! <laughs> It's the Wick Reaper. The Wick Reaper. If you don't know what Wick is, look at the fuck up. It's 2021. All of y'all should be plugged in enough to know what the hell the Wick Reaper means. And I gotta tell you, I tried to tell you, Bray. I tried to tell you, dude. That child support shit was no joke. It ain't no bitch. Child support undefeated against men. Promise you. But no, you just had to sit there and play with the flames. Well, your ass got fucking burnt. What the hell was this supposed to be? Who the hell was this? The Wick Reaper. <laughs> Tell me who you think <laughs> this, this French fried version of the feed looks like. Wrong answers only, or maybe right answers only at this point. God only knows. Why is it every time you put Randy Orton in something, now it seems like, He's got to be dragged out in this multiple months long storyline and you just can't wait for them to fucking end. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, it was bad. Uh, nothing can top the stupidity of the night that was the fucking main event. <laughs> oh, my God. It's bad enough. We waste this stupid shit with Daniel Bryan now. It's bad enough. We got to shoehorn him in and distract away from Edge, who has a rightful reason to be in his spot because he won the Royal Rumble, and Roman Reigns, who has a rightful reason to be in his spot because he's not only the most interesting act that you have in the company at the moment, but oh, by the way, he's also the fucking Universal Champion. So it makes sense that these two would want to face off at WrestleMania. But no, we just got to put in the vanilla midget for everybody to fucking geek out to. Oh, God. How ridiculous to continue to have to structure a match where you're going to keep selling that Daniel Bryan's going to make Roman Reigns tap. Daniel Bryan's going to make Roman Reigns tap. And Roman did not tap. Let's be clear. He was clearly utilizing a Samoan sinus sweep technique just like what I'm doing here, you see, it could look like you're tapping, but you're actually not. Samoan sinus sweep. Only Roman does it. It looks like five to ten times more masculine than me. Doesn't mean I'm not masculine. It just means we're talking about the fucking tribal sheets ahead of the table here, for God's sakes. I look pale in comparison to him. 
But when he does the Samoan sinus sweep, you see, you can do camera tricks and make it look like I'm tapping out. I'm not tapping out. What he was doing, he was trying to clear his airways because the scent of Daniel Bryan's generic knockoff ass hair products were getting into his nasal passages. It was cutting off the oxygen to his brain. So he had to do this and he bought himself enough time. Because that's what a resourceful tribal chief would do. And main event J came in and you thought, oh my God, he's actually going to do something right. But eventually the main event J, event J showed you why he's Jey Uso. Is he couldn't even get shit right. And then we get all to the squirrely finish. Yes, Roman wins, but did anybody win with this? Let's see here. Legend comes back, wins the Royal Rumble after being gone for years. You have a guy that's arguably your top face of the company, your top guy in the company, and they're positioned to go face off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. And here comes Daniel Bryan into the mix to fuck everything up. Am I talking about 2014 with them being on a new platform? No! It's the same shit now, it's just 2021. But instead of it being Batista and Randy Orton, it's freaking Roman Reigns and Edge. The only constant here is Daniel Bryan. God, this is so stupid. I may even do a separate video about just how ridiculous and dumb and stupid this is. Now you got fans talking about, did Edge turn heel? What does this mean for Roman? What does this mean for Edge? Now they're assuming Daniel Bryan's getting shoved in here. Imagine the gross imbecility and stupidity of wedging Daniel Bryan in here. And if your thought is, well, you want to sit there and combine that story in because... No, you fucking don't! If your thought is, well, you don't want Roman or Edge to eat the pinfall... No! We don't fucking need that! This company far too often goes to the sloppy, lazy-ass triple threat, so that way the two people that you actually give a shit about, one of them doesn't have to eat the L. And I don't want to see that! It just gumbles up and jarbles up the fucking works. And now you're trying to squeeze this little damn ass gerbil into what should be a really interesting and compelling storyline heading into WrestleMania because we wouldn't fucking wait a couple of months to do the thing between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns when it would have been a great post-mania angle. My issue is not doing an angle with them because there is an angle there. There is definitely story there. The issue is, is the story right now is supposed to be Edge and Roman, and that's entirely what we should have been focused on. But no, we're on a new fucking internet streaming platform now. And we had the legend come back and win the Rumble after being gone for years, and people are really happy to see him back. Unlike Batista, where they're already bitching because the freaking Keebler Elf didn't win the damn Royal Rumble when he didn't deserve to, and it wasn't right. And all the while... You're forcing the Keebler Elf into this fucking spot that, oh, by the way, he didn't earn. He didn't earn. He didn't earn. Roman's the champ. Edge won the Royal Rumble. Daniel Bryan hasn't beaten Edge. He hasn't beaten Roman. He has no business being thought of of even being in this spot. Let him and Main Event J go have their own pre-show match at WrestleMania. Night one or two, doesn't matter. That's sufficient. So yeah, the whole ending of this was just like stupid. This whole show was stupid. You got issues with this Peacock thing, WWE. You got three weeks to figure them out and fix them. And maybe for those of you that actually are Peacock subscribers before this, do they really not have the ability to like pause and rewind live streaming? Really? Really? And where the fuck did we ask for the two minute lag? Oh my god. Yeah, I wasn't expecting much coming into tonight. By god. I sure as hell didn't get it. 